Males fight a lot in mouse populations. We cannot put two males in a cage with a female. First of all, she'll be pregnant by both of them probably within 24 hours, and we won't know which one is the dad. That's not good for us determining how to separate her pups. Secondly, after they get her pregnant, you know, because they're going to take turns with her because she's like, you know, whatever. Um, I ain't got nothing else to do. And they're going to kill each other. <laughs> That's just a simple, simple thing about it. They're going to run around, run, they start running and chasing each other around the cage. And then they square off and look at each other and go around in a circle looking at each other. You know, they don't want to turn their backs on each other. But somebody going to get tired, and uh, when he get tired, he get his neck slashed. Or he get his tail bit off, or his ear bit off. Or he gets sharp teeth in his throat. That's what happens. And so we put, we make sure that we have two females and a male, because females are not going to fight to the death like that, in that situation with the mice. Now, in human reality, we know that's not the case. We see women scrapping all the time. Oh, when the angry man drops a single, we got to respond. And he dropped a single about why the manosphere has taken a turn for the worse. Now, me and Valdez have had the discussion over the past two, three years, I would say. And this is prior to the man is returning into what it is now. And he, you know, he gives his reasons about why the manosphere has turned into what it is. And he's 100% right. We might kind of differ on uh, some reasons, which is, which is fine because there's so many reasons why it, this thing flips on his head that it probably would take a whole year just to analyze the post-mortem of what happened to it. Uh, but I think we would agree the biggest reason why the manosphere flipped is because the women have come to the space. And there was weakness in the manosphere. There always was. Because you had uh, men damaged by the gynocracy. Not only damaged, but trained by it. And whether we like it or not, the gynocracy still has us by the short hair. Every man still has that little button. You know how it was, when you see a puppy or a kid and you pick, pick it up by the nape of, a, of its neck, it goes limp because that's a little nerve that shuts the body off so that the mother can carry it to safety without it struggling. I think men, black men especially, still have that little button in the back of their neck. And if you don't guard it, then women can disarm you, which is the first thing they try to reach for when they come into this space. They try to reach for that, that disarm button so that you'll go limp. And everybody knows what that is, you know, because. Uh, Stardust said it a long time ago, you know, the MGTOW said it a long time ago. Every MGTOW is just one blowjob away from going back to the to the Matrix. And you know who the weak ones are, because when their blowjob is offered, they turn. They turn into ciphers. And we'll get into what a cipher is, but well, I think I've mentioned it before. A cipher is a little later in the video. But let's get to the pretext. I said about four years ago, because this is when Obsidian was still ranting and he wanted the environment the social environment kind of uh, adjusted so to speak really destroyed because he wanted black women to come back to the table and horse trade with the men he wanted to level the playing field so that black women wouldn't have the advantage over black men as far as the sexual relations were concerned because then black men would have something to offer that black women wanted and black women would trade what they have, which is what black men wanted, which is sex and companionship for resources and protection. 
And if the state stopped providing resources and protection for black women, then black women will come back and cooperate. That is the gist of the theory that was projected back then. And I knew because I follow uh, politics and I follow business that that was going to happen. You can see a downturn. You had just had one. Even though you just had one, black women didn't come back. But I knew the second downturn, they weren't going to be able to supply the social benefits that they had once done. And black women would have to come back and join with their men to stabilize their lives. And I asked them back then, when they come back to the table, this is like two years before it actually happened, when they come back to the table, what are you going to ask for? What are you going to demand? Do you know what you're going to ask for? Because I keep hearing all this stuff about we, we want complete surrender. We want them to be prostrate on the ground and admit all their wrongs and and just throw up their hands and and give black men the unconditional surrender that they say that they want it. I was curious personally. He said, OK, because I know they're going to come back. I want to see what happens. So I kept chronicling the changes in black women's attitude and their their slow creep back to the table back to the line and it's the ongoing negotiations well I, I was monitoring black women in their progress but what i didn't monitor was black men and what happened is the black women got closer and started coming to the table started negotiating what happened is something i didn't expect is that groups of black men sectors of black men were going to start trying to qualify themselves for these women coming back. They started fighting amongst each other for the women coming back. And that is what you see going on now. It's, it's basically competition for, for, for mates. You see it on both sides. You see it with the women too, with, which is competition for mates, but more intense with men, especially black men. Black men are used to being sexual concubines for, for black women. Black men are used to kowtowing to black women. That's what that's the way we've been trained. That's how we compete for women in the black sector, which is, if you think about it, it's very interesting that, that this plays out. This plays out. I was listening to Nicole Ali, and she was she was actually doing a, a third part to the Mount Utopia, and I asked her to do it years ago. I asked her to do it because. In her field, what she does in a regular job, she has to test different compounds, different compounds and different uh, treatments on mice. And so she has lots and lots and lots of mice. She, uh, she has a whole lab full of them, right? Where she has to take care of them. She has to uh, help make sure that they're fed. She has to you know, separate the pups when, the, when they're born. So she knows, she's, you know, because she's been in this field so long, she intimately knows lab mice. And she knows how they generate uh, their, their activities and even, you know, their, their behaviors. So that's why I asked her to look at Mouse Utopia, because she was more qualified than I was to actually do a treatise on them about how if you give them food and water and, you know, without predators, you know, how would the generation over time react? It's a very interesting video. I'll put the link in the description. I also put Angry Man's uh, link to his video in the description also. Okay, but there was something interesting that she said about mate competition and mate selection. She says when they mate the females in the lab, they don't put two male mice in the same cage. And the reason they don't do that is because even though the female mice would have sex with both of them, and for her job, it'll be hard to separate the pups with different genetic IDs because you put two different males in there. But she said also, the males would compete for the, for the female, and they'll compete for the females un, unto death. So even though they're both getting attention and both getting sex for the female, they will still attack each other. They will still try to kill each other because this innate uh, a mate competition is innate in the male. And the, the thing is, is what's happening amongst the manosphere is exactly that. What you see is mate competition going on right now. All this productive versus non-productive, select versus non-select, uh, Pookie and Ray Ray, this kind of stuff. All this talk is basically mate selection, mate competition. All COVID-19 or the downturn 
in the economics. All, all the government did was return the women back to the table, put the female back into the cage with the males. And once you put the females back in the cage with the males, the males will compete for her. They will have sex with her, even though she's their offering. What's happening is now you have males competing for each other, competing for that woman and viciously competing for the woman. So as more females come into this space, the more vicious the competition gets. So now we know what it will happen when the females come back to the table. Exactly what you're seeing right now, make competition. That's all it is. What would happen to the sector when the women come back to the table? What are you going to ask for? You turn males from flaming hot, fire breathing, anti feminists into pygmies. And you turn red pill dudes that, that believe in the cause into ciphers, into blue pill ciphers. What's the cipher? What's the blue pill cipher? Blue pill cipher is a person that took the red pill, decided they didn't like the life outside the matrix and when they got a chance they wanted to get plugged back in but to get plugged back in they had to turn on their fellow crewmate their fellow human beings inside zion and that's what cypher exactly did he wanted to destroy zion just so he could get plugged back into the matrix so you got men willing to destroy the manosphere bring it down level it to the ground just so they can be selected by the women coming back to the table. Which I hoped it wouldn't happen, but it's something that I feared, because you could see it coming. What happened, did your balls drop off? In a word, yes, they did. They went from, as soon as you put the, the female lab mouse back into the cage, instead of sharing her, they tried to slash each other's throats. Welcome to the desert of the real. That's all I got. Until next time, this is BGS out, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.